Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we get to talk about this, which is the Revelpoint Inspire 2 3D Scanner. Uh, now, Revelpoint has an Inspire 1, which we've covered on the channel a few years ago. I think it was actually the first Revelpoint scanner we covered here. Uh, this one has some nice upgrades, and I wanna talk about where it fits in the lineup, what kinds of things you can scan with it, and what my general opinion is of the scanner. So, let's get started first by mentioning that we are an affiliate channel. Revelpoint did send me this scanner, consider it a paid promotion. Um, but if you are looking to buy, there's big discounts going on right now, and our affiliate link and our discount code will save you just a little bit more. So, with all that out of the way, what is this scanner? Well, this is something that is in the four to $500 price range that includes a laser scanning mode. And that's something that you're not gonna find anywhere else. At least I haven't found one yet. So for $459 for the standard kit, um, $549, so somewhere around there, those are the retail prices, um, you'll get the mobile kit included, but everything else is the same between the two versions. Now they're always on sale. I think they're close to $100 off right now. So you're looking at, you know, 350 to 450, which is a killer deal on getting into 3D scanning if you're just getting started. So 11 parallel laser lines plus an IR structured light mode. One of the big differences that you'll see between, let's say the structured light mode that is on a Metro X or a Metro Y Pro is this one is actually capable of doing face scans. The versions or the, the full field modes that are in the Metro Y Pro and the Metro X are not meant to be used on human faces. It will damage your eyes. The intensity of the light is just too bright. Uh, so if you are looking to do human scanning, face scanning, things like that, this is a good choice for you to get into that. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that it does come with a small turntable. And so these are the ones that Revopoint ships with a lot of their scanners. You plug in uh, power to it and it just starts turning. There's a speed dial and you can change the direction. So if you are doing, let's say little figurines or small models, that's a good option if you're using it in the standard IR structure light mode. Um, it does come with a nice tripod. It has extendable feet on it, it has little locks on it. You can use it as a handle. And it does also come with a couple of other accessories. Um, one of the cool features that this comes with that I haven't seen before is actually this, this little box here has filters in it. Now these filters go on the depth cameras and they give you the ability to scan outdoors. Now we have to be careful when we say scan outdoors because that blanket statement doesn't work. It will go up to 20,000 lux, I think is what they're claiming. Now, if you're outside in the middle of the summer on a sunny day, you're looking at 120,000 lux. So while you can scan outside, it's not going to be in all conditions. You still need to plan accordingly and make sure that you're not in direct sunlight in the middle of the summer day. Full disclosure, I haven't tested scanning outside. It is very cold and windy here. Um, here on the East Coast, we've had a, a pretty cold chill blow through here. I think yesterday it was a high of 32 degrees. It's actually pretty cold in my garage right now. Um, so I haven't been able to test that functionality out. And generally I don't scan outdoors. Um, I've done it with a few different scanners, but generally I scan in the garage or inside. So. I will test that at some point. Um, just keep in mind, it is an accessory. It does come with both versions of the scanner. Uh, the only difference between the versions is the mobile kit, which is essentially a, um, a handle that has battery power that lets you link the two together. Uh, this unit does come with Wi-Fi 6, so you can use the Revo Mirror app. If you like to do that, you can use it on your phone and you can see what you see on your screen. Uh, so that's a nice addition. If you're doing mobile scanning, that's kind of a requirement. Um, if you are not doing mobile scanning, you can still use that and you can kind of mirror what you see on the screen. So those are all nice options. Now, in terms of the specs, uh, when you get into a four or $500 scanner, you don't expect it to be the same level of spec that you would see in a $1,000 to $2,000 scanner. Um, however, the accuracy on this thing is 0.05 millimeters. And to compare that to something like the Metro X or the Metro Y, those are 0.02 millimeters. So 0.05 out of this thing is pretty dang good if you ask me. Um, some other things to consider, the volumetric accuracy. Now uh, this is really where we start to see a big difference. Um, scanners like the Metro X, the Metro Y, the Morocco, especially the plus version with the PMK kit, those have really good numbers in terms of the volumetric accuracy. So if you're scanning a single frame or a small object, it's not really a big deal, it doesn't come into play. If you're trying to scan the length of a vehicle, like a car, well, the further you go, the more accumulated errors that you build into those scans. And so uh, 
when we're talking about something like the Metro Y or the Metro Y Pro, that's their accuracy 0.02 plus 0.04 times the length in meters. With something like this, we're at 0.05 plus 0.1 millimeter times the length in meters. Um, and so what that means is that 0.1 millimeter is already quite a bit bigger than the 0.04 that we see in the Metro series of scanners. And then we have to multiply that times the length in meters. So what this means is as you scan bigger and bigger objects, you have the potential to be further and further off. Um, and this is not really the scanner that you would use to scan big objects anyways. It's really meant for smaller objects. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, it does have RGB color capture, so if you're using the IR structure light mode, you can do color captures. I've tested it out on a few things, and it does work pretty well. Um, there are a couple of different scan modes. There's not a dedicated turntable mode like you see in the Metro series of scanners because this is basically power on and it starts spinning. Um, but you do have global markers, you do have uh, marker tracking, and you do have feature tracking. Keep in mind that the laser scanning, unless you have a track it, the laser scanning does require markers, whether it's global marker to be captured beforehand or marker tracking on the fly. Um, global marker and marker do also work on the IR structured light mode. Uh, there are a couple of other cool features and things that they've added into this. Uh, I've already mentioned the filters and the mobile kit, um, but in general, I would say that this is a really solid offering for somebody that's getting started or is looking to add a laser scanner for scanning some of those smaller objects. Now, when we say smaller objects, I'm not talking about pulling out details and small coins, but scanning this thermostat housing is a good example that I've scanned with a couple different scanners now. Um, this is a perfect object for this parallel laser line mode. It's got 11 parallel lines and it actually pulls in at about 85 frames per second on my computer. Now keep in mind when we, we look at the frame rate on a Metro Y or a Metro X, we're looking at 40 to 50 to 60 frames a second, but we're pulling in a whole lot more points. So when we see 80 frames a second, that's really good and it doesn't feel laggy or slow, but keep in mind that we're only pulling points in where those parallel lines are. So um, while it is quite a bit faster in terms of that frame rate, it's not pulling in more points than say a Metro X or a Metro Y or a Metro Y Pro. All right, so with all that out of the way, uh, I did mention price, but I'll mention it again. The retail price on the base kit is $459 and on the advanced kit is $559. Uh, that $100 difference just comes down to uh, the mobile kit. And again, the mobile kit is just a few parts. Uh, it's a cable, it's a phone holder, and it is a, um, a battery handle. So basically you stick this battery handle in between the tripod. Uh, I really do like the fact that they offer that as a kit. You can bundle them together, but you can also buy it separate. And from what I've seen, there's no difference between the scanners. There's no difference in any of the other kit components. You can also add in additional um, options like more marker dots or scan spray or the 3D uh, magnetic markers that we have with the advanced kit on uh, the Metro X. And so all that can, that can be added as well. Um, one thing to keep in mind also is that there are now three versions of RevoScan. Uh, so if you're using a Morocco, Original Inspire, um, Mini, a Pop Series, a Range Series, those are all structured light scanners with no laser ability, so you use the default RevoScan software. If you're using the Inspire 2, Metro X, Metro Y, Metro Y Pro, use the version of RevoScan called Revo Metro. Um, originally, it was just the Metro X version of it, but since they added the Metro Y and the Inspire 2, we now have it called, just called Revo Metro. And then if you have a Trackit, there's a special version for the Trackit. Now, I have been playing around with the Trackit. I will be doing a video on that in the near future. Um, unfortunately, it requires a lot more space as well as better regulated temperatures with the cold snap that we've had here. My garage right now is like 50 degrees. It's just a bit too cold in here to scan with. And in my office, I just don't have quite enough space to set it up and calibrate it. So that video will be coming. It's supposed to be a bit warmer later in the week and next week. And I'm hoping that it'll warm up enough in here to, to be a consistent temperature to test that one out. All right, so what do we think that we should be scanning with the Inspire 2? Well, keep in mind it is a small scanner. The distance between the depth cameras is really what is going to drive the distance away from our object. There is not gonna be multiple depth cameras in this little unit. It is actually 
Um, pretty small and compact. Uh, there's only a play button on the back. There's not a plus minus for setting the exposure. Um, and so everything is, is pretty tightly packed in here. And with that, we have to stay relatively close to our objects. Now, when I say relatively close, it's about the same distance that you are away with something like the Metro X. But the Morocco, for example, you can be up to a thousand millimeters away. So if you're scanning a big object, uh, a scanner like the Morocco that has multiple depth cameras, some that are close together and some that are far apart, can really make a difference in how long it takes to scan big objects. This is not going to be scanning a big object. Um, I did a test on uh, the front corner of my star in here. When you've got markers on an object and you use marker tracking for the IR structure light, you can get it done. I think that it would just take quite a long time. Um, one of the reasons is you have to deal with cable length. Now this is always a problem. Um, these cables are getting a little bit longer. So you can see here, this one's probably between three and four feet. These are getting longer with each release of scanners, but there is going to be a limit to how far we can go with these USB-C cables. And so that's always gonna be the hang up. You're not gonna be able to position a laptop and scan over um, an engine bay or across a whole fender. So you will have to be using something like the mobile kit and you will wanna be using the, um, the mirror app from RevoScan to see it on your phone. Uh, that way you don't have to constantly be looking back over at the computer. So it is possible to do a wireless scan like that and scan bigger objects, but you will have to really consider how many markers you're gonna to need to put on the, the thing that you're scanning. In the case of a car, uh, unless you have a lot of unique features, you are gonna need markers and you are gonna have to have five to six in frame at all times. So when you have a scanner that is really meant to be, you know, sort of this far away from your object, you are gonna have to put, I'd probably have to put 15 to 20 marker dots on this mud flap alone just to be able to scan it. So something to keep in mind, can it be done? Yes, in a pinch, if you, are gonna be scanning small objects mostly, but every once in a while you need to say, scan a bumper or a deck lid or a door or something like that. You could make it happen. There are much better scanners for that process, like the Morocco, for example, um, being wireless and having that far mode so you can get pretty far away. But you could, you could make it happen as long as you had enough markers on the object. Uh, I did try this in the feature tracking to do an engine bay. And again, the issue that we run into is having to be a certain distance away from your objects. You're not capturing all those unique details. So um, again, something I'm comparing it again to the Morocco uh, simply because it has that far mode. So with the Morocco, you could see half an engine bay in one frame. With this, you're talking about a very small area that you're dealing with. And so the feature tracking just doesn't work as well because you're really looking at a bunch of round hoses and cables and wires and things like that. And it just doesn't have enough unique features to be able to capture it. So if you are interested in scanning things like engine bays or big car parts like hoods and bumpers and things like that, you could make it happen if you really wanted to, but it's probably not the best choice for that. Now, what I will say is that I was really impressed with the laser scanning mode. Um, I did this, again, this thermostat housing, which I've, kind of adopted as one of my default parts when I'm testing some like laser scanners. And I was really impressed with it. Now it took longer than it did with the Metro X or the Metro Y. And that's simply because those are pulling in more points while the frame rates are a little bit lower on those, uh, the number of points that they're able to pull in per second is quite a bit higher. Uh, so we're able to scan something like this in just a couple minutes. Um, I also ended up doing this in four or five different scans. Whereas with those um, Metro X, Metro Y scanners, I was able to really nail it down with just two scans and position it and, and get all the points in. Now that's partially a setup issue. Uh, it's partially the amount of space I have to work with, but I felt that it was much easier to capture uh, more scans in less in each scan with this than I was to try to capture everything all at once. With parts like this, uh, you know, this mud flap here, I did not have very much luck doing this in the structured light mode. And again, simply because it doesn't have enough unique features with marker dots, totally fine. But with um, just feature tracking, not really because there's just not enough unique um, features or edges or things on it. So once again, 
Can it do that? Yes. If you have something that has a bunch of unique features, it works a bit better. So if you look at something like um, a bicycle helmet or a game controller or something that has a lot of different features it can use to help with tracking, then it does a better job. Um, if you have something that is very smooth and rounded and there's not really any big unique features that it can use to track, uh, that's just gonna be a bit harder and you're gonna need to use marker dots. So overall, I think for the price, this is a really great offering for an entry-level laser scanner. Uh, it has a lot of ability on the laser scanning side. Again, it's only 11 parallel lines. There's no single or cross line modes like you get with um, Metro Y, Metro Y Pro. But if you are trying to get into laser scanning, scan small parts, let's say um, RC car parts or small car parts, things like that, I think it's a great option, um, especially at the three, $400 range. Now you can do bigger parts, of course. You could do um, you know, intake manifolds, throttle bodies, things of that nature. And those would be just fine as well. You just have to come back to your setup, the number of marker dots that you're able to place on your object. Um, if you place marker dots on rounded areas, then it becomes a bit harder to process after the fact. So you really need to have a lot of area where you can put those marker dots on. I really do like, uh, in this case, my setup, is to just use this plate. Now I've got small marker dots on one side and I've got the big ones on the other. And I've also got those, you know, those 3D marker blocks from RevoPoint that I can position around. And those help because as you start to tilt the scanner down, you see the side of the marker dot. And if you just have a flat plane, as you start to tilt the scanner down, sometimes you lose tracking on those. So I've been really impressed with this. Um, I would say that for a three to $400 scanner, you're probably not gonna find anything that can compete with it, especially the fact that it has uh, laser scanning ability. Again, all the, all the different things that I already said, keep in mind that you will need markers if you're doing big, broad items. They will take longer because the field of view is smaller than uh, something like a Morocco where you've got a far mode. But overall, I think that you can get a lot done with this. Uh, I'll put some scans, some links in the description of the video you can take a look at. Um, I'll put the one for this thermostat and I'll put a couple other in that I'll do that you can take a look at. Um, I'll also, you know, scan my hand or my face or something and, uh, and toss that in there if you wanna see. But if you have any questions on this or any other scanner from RevelPoint, leave a comment. I know RevelPoint watches these videos and they will chime in if there's technical issues. Um, also, I can probably answer most questions that you have uh, relating to these if you have them. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.